In September 2020, all of us were naively excited for what would end up being the worst time in GPU history. Stock issues, money in cryptocurrency, trade war, scalping, all of this extremely damaging to the community I love and have been a part of for as long as I can remember. But what actually happened during the 18 month GPU shortage? Who's to blame? And why did it need to be like this? So welcome back to TechLens News and the official one year anniversary of the GPU crisis update, where we cover some of the most important topics and data that you need to know when it comes to graphics cards and PC hardware news. But today to celebrate one year, what I want to do is something a little bit different. We've been covering the GPU crisis consistently in a variety of different ways. So what I want this video to be is a recap of what actually happened, why it was so bad and the contributing factors that led to one of the worst times for PC gamers. We're talking initial stock issues, mining, scalpers, the trade war, retailer gouging, even manufacturers selling directly to miners. Everything that I can think of broken up into a loose timeline that details what happened during the darkest days of GPU history. Let me explain. After only just recovering from when this all started, which can be pinned down to the launch of the RTX 3080 back on September 17th, 2020, where the world of graphics cards and the consumer market was repeatedly hit in the face with a sledgehammer. But to answer why, we first need to rewind about 16 days before that. This was Nvidia's announcement video for their RTX 30 series GPUs. Come here, Papa where they revealed the first wave of the new generation and boasted the greatest generational leap in performance at a price per model consistent with their previous generation. For Nvidia, this needed to happen for two reasons. Not only were they recovering from price to performance backlash by consumers affecting the sales of their 20 series GPUs, AMD were also coming back strong, re-entering the high end after multiple generations of not being able to compete on peak performance. And they did just that with most of their models undercutting NVIDIA's while offering a similar, if not a greater level of pure gaming performance. Because of these promises of huge performance increases, at the time, many people saw this as their last opportunity to offload current high-end graphics cards before they became outmatched by cards half their price. This was most seen by 2080 Ti owners who were taking as much as a $500-$600 hit on eBay compared to what they paid in the anticipation of getting a newer, more reasonably priced GPU with better performance. Then launch day came. And this happened and kept happening. And although not uncommon immediately after a GPU launch, especially for highly anticipated cards, this was only the beginning of what would be the greatest GPU shortage ever and was set to last the best part of a year and a half. The root cause of the shortage truly sparks fire in people's hearts even to this day. Gamers blame miners. Miners blame, well, everything other than mining. Add scalpers, the pandemic, manufacturer and retailer markups. But the fundamental issue here was supply and demand. But what caused it? Well, let me show you. When the first wave of the current generation launched, we're talking NVIDIA RTX 3000 and AMD RX 6000, there was already an abnormally high amount of interest for the latest cards. For OG gamers, the price of performance made for a very tempting upgrade for a lot of people, and pandemic lockdowns added to this by also increasing the total number of gamers. This means that in late Q3 2020, there was already a higher than anticipated interest in the next generation GPUs, which led to more people excited and frantically trying to get their upgrade while also fighting against the scalpers that typically jump on a new launch. These issues do normally resolve themselves, as cards keep being produced and stock keeps being sent out to retailers around the world while the hype dies down a little. However, it didn't feel like it was going to happen anytime soon, and cryptic messages from the biggest player in the GPU space didn't help. Jensen Wong, Nvidia's CEO, stated that the 3080 and 3090 have a demand issue, not a supply issue. The demand issue is that it is much, much greater than we expected, and we expected really a lot. But I can't be the only one that thinks that that's a load of shit. There's a supply issue because for whatever reason, the demand was miscalculated. They go hand in hand. And Nvidia stated that they estimate the GPU shortage would last throughout the end of 2020. However, it got real bad, real quick. The ongoing US-China trade war introduced a new problem. The US Commerce Department imposing restrictions on US businesses working with SMIC, China's largest semiconductor manufacturer. This was going to have a big impact on AMD and Nvidia as neither company manufacture their own semiconductors that live at the heart of their graphics cards. Their chip designs are manufactured by TSMC for AMD's RX 6000 series and Samsung for Nvidia RTX 3000 series, which apparently had low yields for Nvidia. However, Samsung and TSMC were already at capacity 
And we're about to get a descending force of companies that can no longer work with their China-based semiconductor manufacturer. Think cars, household appliances, mobile phones, spacecrafts, life support machines. Basically, anything that runs on electricity with even a small amount of inbuilt logic or timer needs a chip to compute that function. And as there's only a few companies around the world equipped to manufacture these chips with an already overwhelming amount of demand and a finite amount of production capacity, you can see that ramping up graphics chip manufacturing was going to be costly and difficult, as they were going to have to compete with all these other clients. At the end of 2020, while I'm setting up my studio and exploring more creative ways to get hold of a GPU, in comes another US-China trade war issue. Laws that protected many computer components from increased tariffs were set to expire. And within five days, Asus already published price increases for their graphics cards, while some other companies were just silently doing it in the background anyway. Although the cost of something has no relevance if you cannot buy it, many people were upset as the expectation was they would be able to buy a GPU soon. That's what they were told. But there was something else bubbling in the background, something much, much worse for gamers, Ethereum profitability. An oversimplified way to explain profitability is a calculation based off the value of Ethereum divided by the amount of nodes mining on the network, meaning if the value of Ethereum goes up, profitability goes up. But if the number of devices mining it go up, profitability goes down due to higher competition. Ethereum had already been on the rise for a few months prior, but between the launch of the 3080 back in September compared to end of year, Ethereum's value had steadily doubled and it wasn't going to stop there, sparking a resurgence in mining. As pandemic related issues still plagued the planet, affecting manufacturers' ability to ramp up and fill the higher than expected demand, crypto profitability continued to soar. And what would be a small supply issue just got so much worse. Within days, Ethereum's value had become the highest it had ever been, and the current mining profitability meant that any current generation GPU had exceptional mining performance, earning the fortunate owner a decent passive income. So the logical next step for miners is more cards equals more money. In terms of miners, they primarily wanted cards with decent Ethereum profitability, which the latest generation had. But profitability wasn't only found in the current generation, which was exploding the used market, with many older models being sold for over their launch MSRP. And the people that were hit the most by this were gamers. Because if you can't buy a current generation card, the logical next step is a cheap used card to see you through, right? No. You remember those 2080 Ti's that we mentioned earlier that were being sold for $500 less than their MSRP? Because no one could buy a GPU and Ethereum profitability was increasing, they almost immediately shot back up to their original market value. And by this time was even higher than that. And because of an overall low supply, this was the same for almost every graphics card, mining capable or not, but did scale exponentially with newer cards and cards with better mining performance, showing that a supply chain recovering from the pandemic was no match for the demands of gamers and miners alike. And as miners were willing to pay significantly more than MSRP for an item that would fundamentally still make them money, this for some people bought opportunity. Let me reintroduce you to those scalpers. Never dying down from launch, but now exacerbating the problem even further, people took advantage of the limited supply situation, which started a trifecta of demand that lasted throughout. Gamers wanted to game, miners wanted to mine, and scalpers wanted to opportunistically line their pockets. You know what they say about the gold rush? The people that made the real money sold the tools. Because these graphics cards could be sold for so much profit, there was an immense amount of incentive for scalpers to find creative, mostly bot-based ways to order faster than any human can. And also circumvent excess ordering countermeasures. Countermeasures put in place so that cards could be distributed more effectively to end customers to stop this kind of anti-consumer practice. But this wasn't the only thing that was meant to help the average person get a graphics card. In comes the Newegg Shuffle a raffle-based system designed for you to win the ability to buy a GPU while also bundling them with other products to deter miners and scalpers, which sometimes came with a literal fire hazard. Additionally, more comprehensive anti-bot measures were being implemented by most retailers, including the extremely popular Linus Tech Tips YouTube channel via their verified actual gamer program. Furthermore, new launches were also here, meaning more cards on the market and depending on how they're manufactured may not impact the stock of other models, which no, didn't make a difference. To the average person, every single GPU launch from AMD and Nvidia felt like a meme and was frequently sold out in minutes, despite company claims. And to add insult to injury, this was happening as more and more pictures were popping up showing scalpers and miners collecting dozens to thousands of graphics cards, while Ethereum profitability continued to increase sharply, and 3080s were being sold by scalpers for over three times their original MSRP. But even if you were lucky enough to get a card from a retailer, new prices were also increasing too, quoting supply chain logistics and trade war 
issues that suspiciously didn't stop and seemed more akin to price gouging due to the crypto situation. But to combat this explosive need from the mining community that was cutting out gaming consumers, Nvidia took it upon themselves to develop two different product categories, CMP and LHR. CMP, or Crypto Mining Processor, came first and were graphics cards specifically designed for mining, but their strategy on this had flaws. Because most of them used a previous generation architecture, their price to mining performance wasn't as compelling as their current generation gaming cards. Furthermore, CMP cards were designed in a way to essentially stop anyone from gaming on them. They didn't even have display ports. This means that when the mining boom is over and you want to sell your assets, your pool of potential buyers won't include the group of people still left, gamers. For LHR or light hash rate products, the implementation was designed to help the crypto demand problem from the other angle. LHR cards reduce the mining performance by about 50% while not changing the gaming performance, which sounded great until the market showed us that the mining performance needs to be significantly lower than that to have the impact Nvidia was hoping for, as all LHR cards were still being sold by scalpers on places like eBay for significantly higher than the MSRP. But these seemingly good intentions went largely without praise from the gaming community for being ineffective, as well as other reasons. Many people quite rightfully didn't have confidence that the light hash rate implementation would be as unhackable as they stated and was broken almost immediately for the 3060 because of a driver leak but fixed for future models furthermore back in early 2021 many reports from market research firms like john petty research were consistently highlighting the eye-watering number of gpus that were being sold directly to miners which felt extremely insulting to a lot of long-term customers in a bad situation speaking of the sec recently charged nvidia with inadequate disclosure regarding the impact of crypto mining to the 2018 fiscal year profits, the last crypto boom, and has been forced to pay $5.5 million. I did have a look at their most recent annual report and couldn't see any breakout for the crypto market here either. So I may be looking in the wrong place, but I wonder if this is going to happen again this time around. But by the end of the first half of 2021, Ethereum's value had peaked to an astronomical new high compared to its entire trading life so far. But there was a glimmer of hope. By this point, it seemed obvious to a lot of people that the crypto situation was the biggest contributing factor to the shortage and price hikes, and the good news was Ethereum was currently tanking almost as fast as it had been skyrocketing. But while we were naively excited to return to normality, little did we know we were about to enter the darkest time of the GPU crisis. Although pricing on the new market had been consistently creeping up, the second half of 2021 started out extremely positive. Ethereum had already fallen to about half of its recent peak and the PC hardware and gaming communities were closely watching as what we thought was the crypto crash ensued. At this point, I had my first bit of positive information for you guys and started the GPU crisis update, primarily reporting on crypto and used market GPU price declines before adding relevant news topics, hopeful for the end. At this point, we were even seeing GPUs in stock on store shelves, but in the background, Ethereum was making a comeback and was heading towards a record high. Because of this, Nvidia's Founders Edition graphics cards were being sold for more than three times their MSRP because for nearly all models, they were the only non-light hash rate option being produced, making them more appealing for miners. At this time, I wanted to better inform you guys of ways to get a cheaper GPU and be done with this whole fiasco. So I started going to some of the in-store drops in my area and documented the whole thing with two great experiences and one that, well, maybe watched that video after this. But by August, we were reporting on Nvidia's light hash rate Ethereum mining limiter becoming unlocked up to 70%, allowing miners to increase their profitability at no extra cost, and indicating that further unlocks were likely, negatively affecting the market even further. At this point, new and used market prices continued to increase, reflecting Ethereum's value and the positive mining news that surrounded it. So continuously becoming frustrated at retailer prices, I decided to do the deepest investigation I could into why the current cost of graphics cards was so high. And what I found was the information we were consistently being told by manufacturers and brands didn't line up with the pricing data, even when we way overestimated their costs and highlighted which manufacturers and retailers were taking advantage of the situation the most. I'm looking at you, Zotac and MS. But by November, Bitcoin and Ethereum had hit their record highs, and everything that was going to make the situation better was falling apart. Retailer prices were still increasing or being locked behind outrageous paywalls, accusations of chip hoarding to keep demand and prices high, and the already several time delayed Ethereum proof of stake migration delayed again. Ethereum 2.0 using proof of stake was our best hope, as it's vastly different by design and is intended to make GPU based Ethereum mining obsolete, with the expected side effect that graphics cards would be in less demand, flooding the market and fixing the shortage rapidly and effectively. But even to this day, 
forever delayed. The surprising next best chance on the horizon was Intel, with CEO Pat Gelsinger now at the helm since February, accompanying Raja Kaduri, a graphics veteran who joined Intel in 2017. This was a big change for Intel and announced their upcoming lineup of Arc Discrete GPUs. With Intel soon to be entering the graphics card market, this would give buyers a third option for getting a GPU and could do some serious good to introduce more stock into a market overwhelmed by demand. For those of you interested to know how that played out, they completely missed the mark and either knowingly or unknowingly made Tech Jesus give wrong information, which is kind of a slap in the face to Steve. But in December, stock was getting better. It was the prices that weren't. I was able to easily go into a store and buy any current generation AMD graphics card, but at roughly two times its launch MSLP making them a significantly worse buy compared to their NVIDIA counterparts. However, stock is still a good sign and with new reports of increased shipments of NVIDIA GPUs, by December, things were looking fortunately different. Ethereum had been on the decline since its November peak and in a time of complete and utter hopelessness for most gamers, things were about to change. By the beginning of the year, Ethereum's value had dropped by about $1,000 compared to its peak and was continuing to drop drastically. This coincided with more reports of increased stock and Intel supposedly launching their GPU lineup this quarter, Q1 2022, though speculation that it would be delayed was high. Because of these factors, I called out that the next few months should be really exciting for gamers, still looking to buy a GPU, but skeptical about the crypto situation because, well, we had been burned once before. And if it did rebound, we could be right back to square one. But new releases from AMD and Nvidia also bought New Hope 2. You could even buy a few of them almost immediately after launch, which hadn't been a thing for about 15 months now. And also the fact that they were being scalped significantly less than previous releases, likely due to high prices. But these were all good indications of what's to come. And what came in the same GPU crisis update was the biggest GPU price drop we had ever seen. The market was changing and people weren't willing to pay such high prices. By March, the tragic news of Russia invading Ukraine gripped the world. And although anything that we've spoken about here is not even remotely important compared to the lives lost and the impact to people, I tried my best to compassionately analyze how that might affect what we talk about here with Ethereum's last big value spike peaking shortly after, which brings us to the biggest GPU price crash in history. Since April 1st, we've seen Ethereum's value completely tank, and with it, demand for GPUs goes significantly down. This has now become the worst time for miners to purchase a GPU since the beginning, back in September 2020, and the gamer miner scalper demand trifecta now has more and more people pulling out of the equation every single day. The glorious impact of this is that prices almost immediately started to come back down, and by April, we're seeing GPUs in stock at MSRP from official retailers, even cheaper than the used market, which was reluctantly attempting to hold on to higher prices. And by May, some models of cards were even selling new for lower than their MSRP, which, if I'm being honest, I'm kind of embarrassed to celebrate, as it's what should happen before RTX 4000 and RX 7000 launches later this year. But it has been quite the journey. And honestly, one without a positive outcome. I see so many people have been drained of their PC hardware and gaming passion. So many of your favorite YouTubers have had to quit or stop producing content. And our community will feel this impact for a very long time. So for all our sakes, I hope this is the end, but I'm very conscious that the price of crypto could rebound with the new launch. And I should look into how a potential looming recession could impact this. But for now, it's been 18 months of fuckery and one year of GPU crisis updates. So if you want to check out each month's installments plus other videos like a GPU scalper investigation, I'll have the full playlist linked below for you guys to check out. Otherwise guys, a like is always appreciated and I hope you have an amazing day.